allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Yes, Mayor. Board of Commissioners Public Meeting, Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017. The time is now 827. Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, notice of this meeting was published in December 1st, 2016 issues of the Nutley Sun and the Herald News and the December 2nd, 2016 issues of the Star Ledger. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Nutley Town Hall Bulletin Board and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Commissioner Tucci? Here. Commissioner Evans? Here. Commissioner Petraco? Here. Mayor Scarpelli? Here. All present, Mayor, except for Commissioner Rogers. He's absent excused. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we're going to go a little out of order tonight. We have some guests here tonight um, who uh, went beyond the call of duty. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Petraco for a proclamation. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to s apologize for keeping everyone waiting, of course. I know, I know tonight's a special night, so thank you for waiting. Um, I actually first found out about the, the unbelievable save our crew team made um, from actually a good friend of mine in Belleville, um, Councilman Kennedy, and he gave me the heads up about this. And I have to say, he actually um, said, you know, you have to do something for these kids. So we have good neighbors watching out for you guys, too. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to give a brief summary of what got back to me, what happened that um, someone unfortunately jumped into the Passaic River. It's amazing they stayed alive as long as they did. Um, but the crew um, team, the coaches, everyone went aiding right over to that individual and threw him a life, um, what would I call it, not a life preserver. What is it? Preserver. Well, this a floating device to him and kept the guy afloat until you could get him into the um, into the, your little boats there. And really, um, I know the Harrison Police Department aided in it, and they couldn't say enough about what you guys did. So, without a further ado, I mean, talk about public safety and the future of our young people in Nutley. It's really a heroic um, feat that you guys did by saving somebody's life. So, uh, I will read the proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas while the crew practice on the afternoon of April 25th, 2017, a commotion alerted Coach Judy um, McIntyre, which I know is known as Coach Mac, I believe, and the crew team members to, the, to a man who had jumped into the water from the bridge in, in Harrison. And whereas in response to the victim, Coach McIntyre and the team members, Michael D. House and Phil Amitz, directed their boat to distress the individual and threw him a floating device to aid and recover. And whereas because of the quick and heroic actions, a life was saved and tragically averted. And whereas Coach <coughs> McIntyre, a Nutley High School graduate and former crew team member, Michael D. Haas, who happens to be my neighbor by my deli, a senior at Nutley High School who will be going into the U.S. Marine Corps, and Phil Amitz, a junior at Nutley High School, who will look into pursuing a career in the health field, helping others, where the individual is responsible for the rescue, and now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Nutley, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that Judy McIntyre, Michael DeHaas, and Phil Amitz be recognized and commended for their heroic rescue and for showing compassion and empathy to the distressed individual. They make Nutley proud. Also, I'd just like to um, congratulate Kevin Smythe. I know you're, you're one of the coaches there. It's just really a tribute of what Nutley's all about and how our children go above and beyond. So I know a lot of times we read all the negative stuff in the newspapers, but it's sure nice to um, read something, you know, and, and, and follow something good in the news. I read this on behalf of all the board of commissioners. I'm sure they want to um, say something. I know Commissioner Tucci, you reached out to me to co-sponsor the bill, uh, I'm sorry, the proclamation, but it was a little late in the day. So if anybody would like to comment before we bring them up, I'd love to hear it. Commissioner Evans? Uh, just uh, 
uh, just a remark to add uh, that it was one not only long history of service and coming aid of others, just that everyone looks upon you today, uh, especially all throughout Nutley, with a great sense of pride. And for me, as a former crew team uh, member, uh, I equally had a double uh, sense of pride, knowing that you were there for their aid. Thank you. Commissioner Tucci? Yes, uh, I, I think the actions, uh, Judy Mack, as Mike, we Mike. affectionately, oh, I'm sorry. I think the actions that uh, Judy Mack, as we refer to her in my family, because she is a lifelong family friend, or in the, actually the entire McIntyre family, all right, is very representative of what this township is about. They saw someone in need, and without any regard to their own safety, just got there and assisted and actually saved this person's life. I mean, Judy Mack, I always knew you were a great teacher. I knew you were a great participant in Parks and Recs, a great family member. I never realized you were a lifesaver, though, all right? And, and along with, you know, your other two students, you know, part of the crew team, which has always been near and dear to my heart, um, there's just no words strong enough, all right, to describe what it is you three did and how you saved this person and how proud and, and happy I am personally uh, just to know you and the crew team and the type of people that, that you bring up through the school system. And I know uh, Coach Smythe has been doing this for years with our youngsters and uh, it's just a testament to the town, to the high school and to the crew team. And the only thing I can say is, is thank you and I know your dad must be smiling down upon us. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Coach Mack, um Michael and Phil, uh, you made yourselves proud, you made your families proud, and you made Nutley proud. And we're very proud of you, and we're glad you're here tonight. And uh, why don't you guys come up and we'll uh, take a picture. We got some uh, proclamations. Coach Mack, you want to uh, say a few words on behalf of your uh, team? Uh, thank you so much on behalf of the boys and myself. Um, we are very honored to be here. Um, I couldn't be prouder of them, and I know the other coaches feel the same way. They saw someone in distress. They wanted to help, and I think that speaks to what the crew team does. It speaks to the athletic department and the idea of building not just good athletes, but 
proper citizens and being willing to put themselves out there for someone else. So thank you again. We really appreciate the honor. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Michael, you want to come up to the podium as sergeants? You want to come forward? Uh, we have some Marine Corps sergeants here to present Michael. Uh, Commissioner Rogers called me and told me that we'd have uh, two sergeants coming tonight to present something to Michael. So, uh, Michael, you stand at the podium with them. Michael, uh, thank you, you for your commitment to uh, serve in, in the Marines. And sergeants, sergeants, thank you for your service. I think we should give the Marines a round of applause yeah. too, right? Yeah. We're going to take a couple minute break. Anybody who wants to leave can leave. Anybody who wants to stay can stay.
All right, Madam Clerk, can you uh, go to communications? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. The Historic Restoration Trust of Nutley has submitted an application for a social fair permit to hold their speakeasy fundraiser on Saturday, June 3rd, 2017, between the hours of 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. at the Kingsland Manor. I need a motion. Move it. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. And that's it for correspondence, Mayor. I have a uh, monthly report uh, from the Public Works Department, Commissioner Tucci. Yes, I have a report, an April report for the Shade Tree Department. Bills, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mayor. Bill list for Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017. Public Affairs, $90,722.95. Revenue and Finance, $7,095,984.09. Public Safety, $29,134.28. Public Works, $52,879.07. Parks and Public Property, $722,384.36. For total payroll, seven hundred eighty-one thousand five hundred sixty-seven dollars and fifty-seven cents. For a grand total of eight million, eight million seven hundred seventy-two thousand six hundred seventy-two dollars and thirty-two cents. I need a motion, please. Move it. Second. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Commissioner Evans. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Tom, can you hear us? Commissioner? Sorry. May have lost the uh, connection. Okay. Public comment on agenda items only. Madam Clerk, can you read the notice? Yes, Mayor. All persons addressing the Board of Commissioners regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted by the Board, each person shall limit their address to three minutes. All remarks to the Board and its individual members must be addressed to the Mayor. The Mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the Board. Dialogue between citizens and others addressing the Board shall be allowed unless the Mayor or presiding officer or the majority of the membership of the Board shall determine that the interests of decorum and or the expeditious conduct of municipal business or being adversely affected by such dialogue. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. Set a quick request when you come up to the podium, please do not pass the podium for the safety of the Commissioners from now on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dave. Anybody like to uh, address the Board of Commissioners this evening? On agenda items only. Seeing none, can uh, we close the uh, public comment portion? Move it. Second. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Board of Commissioner announcements. Commissioners, any announcements? Uh, two things. This, uh, this Saturday, we have our uh, fishing contest at the Mud Hole, and we also have our memorial tree planting program at Kingsland Park. We, we in public safety have our bike rodeo, so we invite all the youngsters out to learn about bike safety. A lot of our police officers and detectives, detectives will be there. It will be a good um, morning, afternoon to meet police officers and get some lessons on some bike safety. I believe we're going to be handing out helmets as well. So anybody that would like to come, it's going to be held right on the ramp at the public safety building where, where you see the police cars park um, from 11 to 2. To a lot of the uh, uh, mayor, I just want to add as well an announcement that we're going to have late night uh, voter registration uh, sign ups uh, at town hall. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, what, 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 did, uh, what are the dates of that again? It's on May 16th from 8 30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you. And the uh, Public Works Department is having a big truck day from noon to three on Saturday, so it's very uh busy Saturday for the youngsters in town. Uh, ordinance introductions. Commissioner Petraco. Yes. Uh, is my mic working? It just went out. I thought. Am I on? Yes. Um, I have an ordinance introduction. It's an ordinance to amend an ordinance codified in the code of the township of Nutley 
Chapter 34, entitled Court Municipal, particularly Article 2, Public Defender, Section 9. I just want to read a little bit of this. This, um, this is increasing a fee for the, um, to 50 to up to 200. Be ordained by the, by the Board of Commissioners, Township and Nully, pursuant to the authority granted to the municipality by NJSA 39-4-1971F, Article 2, Section 9 of Chapter 34 of the Code of Township of Nutley entitled public T defender is hereby amended to changing the application fee from up to fifty dollars to up to two hundred I <clears throat> I move that this ordinance be passed to second reading and advise the Nutley Sun advertising the Nutley Sun together with notice required by law and that further consideration of said ordinance for the final passage by the Board of Commissioners to be held at its second reading I believe it is June 6th. June 6th, 2017. I move it. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Okay, now I have a public hearing. Here. Yes, thank you. Um, this is relating to two hour parking. Um, this is for Highfield Lane. Um, from the hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. to our parking. It's also from 520 feet west of River Road. In ordinance to be am amend, an ordinance codified in the Code of Township and Nully, Chapter 228, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, particularly Article 2, Parking of Certain Streets, Section 11, titled Parking and Time Limited. <coughs> I'd like to open the public portion. Would anybody like to be heard on ordinance number 3357? Approach the mic. Good evening. My name is Bill Plesak. I live on 33 Highfield Lane. Um, this ordinance is of particular interest to me because I live on the seventh house <clears throat> up from River Road, 33. Um, I've been there 21 years and I feel like I'm living in the middle of a parking ride. <clears throat> There's people catching the, uh, the bus into the city down below uh, East White Terrace uh, parking from River Road up to me and beyond me. Now, this is the first time in my 21 years that they're actually hitting my house and parking in front of my house all day. Now, <clears throat> what I'm afraid with the ordinance, but it only covers 520 feet, they're just going to move from down the street to the middle of the street because Conduit Place is also right there, which has become a parking lot. I taught my two daughters to drive, to ride their bikes there. We used to play ball on that street. You can't do anything there now because that's become a parking lot. And I, this is conduit, my house is right here. So they're going to stop parking at the bottom, they'll go in the middle of Highfield Lane. So I appreciate the effort, but I don't know if it's going to solve the problem of the parking So there. are you requesting that we, just so I'm clear on it, add conduit place to I it? I would like that. And um, you're concerned about the 520 feet from River Road? Right, because like I said, I'm at the seventh house. That's approximately 350 to 400 feet. I don't know how you're calculating the 520. Well, is it from the curb up or is it from the whole street of River Road up? Yeah. Because if it's from the curb, then my house is approximately 350 feet to 400 feet. If you go 520, that's maybe another two or three houses up for me. And that's what I'm saying. Well, it's in the middle of the street now will become the parking lot. I, I know when they do these traffic studies, they're concerned about the intersections and not clogging up the intersections. And I think, I'm not certain, but I will check, that is the reason why um, they give that little buffer. But we've been going through a lot of this in town. And, you know, we've, we actually, I actually had an ordinance on tonight to start to allow decals to be um, put on cars of the residents that are living in these two hour parking. It's so complex. Um, I've talked with the commissioners and they've asked me to table it tonight because it seems for every good action you do, there's a con to it. And I have to tell you, this is not an easy solution. Um, it's just like you're saying, you know, we'll do Highfield Lane now. Now, you don't know, maybe they'll go park on Nutley Avenue and Nutley Avenue will be here next. And I'm very familiar with that part of town. Um, I recommend that we pass this tonight to give the residents down there some kind of relief. And I would be glad for my assistant to take your telephone number and I'll look into that 520 foot and we'll also look into doing um, Conduit Ave 
and adding that to the to our parking. I would appreciate that consideration. It'd be my pleasure. Okay. Good. Okay. What what I suggest, uh, Commissioner, is that the uh, you know police department monitor the situation, and then uh, report back to you on uh, any further changes to the ordinance. Okay. Something you said, Commissioner, before I, I like was the people who do live there. If you have to park during the day, how are you going to identify that I'm not just somebody? Well, that's been the, the that's been the six million dollar question, and there's many reasons. It, you know, it just it it just has gotten so complicated um, with those decals. But because I recommended and I worked with the chief of police and traffic safety about handing the residents decals to be able to park, so that you won't be subjected to, to two hour parking. You know, because by passing this, if you leave right. your car out there, now you're going to get a ticket too. Um, there's a lot of um, questions about it and I'm really working through those questions with my colleagues because we don't want to do something and it be wrong even though I feel like that no matter what we do with this particular issue there's going to be some people that are happy and some people that are no happy not happy I think that we're really in a situation here where um, there's just more traffic there's more people um, working in the city I I had um, an apartment above my deli which I know you come in at times I just rented that the first thing the girl asked me was where do I catch the bus to New York City so when I sat down the street she's like where do I park you know so it's it's an issue that we're really working on really diligently to to find the right formula that works okay. thank you Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klesak. Anybody else want to be heard on ordinance number 3357? Seeing none. Move to close the public portion. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? I think, we lost I think we lost him again. We lost him. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Uh, I'm back. Aye. He's back. He's back. C Commissioner Evans? Aye. Okay. And now we move the ordinance. Move the ordinance. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tucci, resolutions. Yes, Mayor. Whereas in 1949, the legislature set aside the last Friday of April as Arbor Day to promote the planting of trees and to encourage the protection of our forests from fires and pests that destroy the beauty and usefulness of our woodlands. And whereas half of New Jersey's total land area is forests that are tree covered, and whereas trees play an important role in the ecosystem in which we live, and trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil caused by wind and water, clean the air we breathe and the water we drink, produce oxygen, provide habitat for birds and wildlife, and reduce heating and cooling costs by moderating temperature. Whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper for fine literature, wood for homes, fuel for fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees provide increased property value, enhanced economic viability, and pleasing aesthetic qualities along streets and properties and municipalities. And whereas tree plantings in yards and farms and schoolyards and parks and along streets and highways creates an enduring heritage for gener generations that follow. And whereas the township of Nutley has completed its 30th year as a member of Tree City USA, and whereas I, Commissioner Mauro Tucci, Director of Parks and Public Property of the Township of Nutley, do hereby proclaim May 6, 2017 as Arbor Day in the community of Nutley and urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and to support our town's urban forestry program. I further urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden hearts and promote the well-being of present and future generations. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Second. Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Uh, aye. Mara, congratulations. It's spring. The town looks great. I love our tree canopy. Please keep going. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Whereas sealed bids were received and read on April 26, 2017 for the Department of Parks and Public Property for a tractor slash loader slash backhoe. And whereas Wilford McDonald Inc., 10 New Maple Avenue, Pinebrook, New Jersey, was the low bidder at $46,552. And whereas the township has received two bids for a tractor loader backhoe, the lowest in the amount of $46,552 from Wilford McDonald. And whereas funds are available from Capital Ordinance Number 3344C and have been certified by the Chief 
chief financial officer said certification being attached to this resolution now therefore be it resolved by the board of commissioners of the township of nutley county of essex state of new jersey that a contract for a tractor loader backhoe be awarded to wilford mcdonald inc 10 new maple avenue pinebrook new jersey i move the resolution second commissioner tucci aye commissioner evans aye commissioner petraco aye mayor scarpelli aye that's all i have mayor commissioner evans thank you mayor uh, uh, resolutions number uh, 108, 9, and 10. Uh, I'd like to consolidate, uh, um, if that's okay, Alan? Yes, that's fine. Right. Uh, whereas playing board has received escrow deposits uh, from uh, four, uh, uh, four, 488, 494 Prospect Street, 160 Walnut Street, and 116 Walnut Street, uh, whereas the playing board has I uh, reviewed and to determine that uh, balances are due uh, in refunds in the amount of $1,500 for 488, 494 Prospect Street, three, uh, excuse me, uh, $4,250 for uh, 160 Walnut Street and $2,230 for 66 Walnut Street. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Millie County of Essex, that the Township Treasurer being here, uh, is hereby authorized to refund escrow fee. For the amount uh, so listed in this in each of these ordinance ordinances uh, these uh, resolutions number 108 number 109 and 110 so moved second commissioner tucci aye commissioner evans aye commissioner petraco aye mayor scarpelli aye be resolved by the board of commissioners of the township of nelly county of essex in new jersey that the treasurer being chief hereby authorized the refund overpayment for tax charges for a total amount of $42,808.62 for the lots and blocks and the amounts in years so lifted in this resolution. So moved. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Nelly, that the uh, Treasurer being is hereby authorized to refund all the payment of water charges for $459 and 77 cents for block uh, 800 uh, 1 slash C uh, 3055 so move. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Petraco, nothing tonight, right? Oh, no. Thank you. All right. Uh, the first four uh, resolutions are Commissioner Rogers' resolutions. Uh, whereas for more than a century, the bicycle has been a utilitarian, economical, environmentally sound, and effective means of, of personal transportation, recreation, and fitness. Now, therefore, we resolve by the Board of Commissioners Township of Nellie County of Essex, State of Jersey, that we encourage all citizens to ride the bicycles to work, to the store, to the park, around their neighborhoods, and with friends and family to promote the personal and societal benefits achieved from bicycling. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Whereas food allergies are a life-threatening illness that affects as many as 15 million Americans and the prevalence is increasing among children. One in every 13 children has food allergies or approximately two per classroom. Now therefore be, res be resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley County of Essex State of New Jersey recognized May 14th through the 20th, 2017 as Food Allergy Awareness Week in the Township of Nutley. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's over health, overall health and well-being, now therefore be we resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley County of Essex State of New Jersey to hereby proclaim May 2017 as Mental Health Month and call upon the citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools in the Township of Nutley to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health, the steps our citizens can take to protect their mental health and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental illness at all stages, especially before stage four. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Where a stroke is a brain attack cutting off vital blood flow and oxygen to the brain. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners in the Township of Nutley County of Essex State of New Jersey that the month of May be declared National Stroke Awareness Month and encourage the citizens of Nutley to learn the signs of a stroke 
As the sooner a patient receives medical treatment, the lower the risk for death or disability. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Whereas bids for the 2017 purchase of asphalt material for the Township of Nelly were received and opened on Wednesday, April 26, 2017, and whereas Newark Asphalt Corp, foot of Passaic Street, North New Jersey, was the low bidder, and whereas the bid for the 2017 purchase of asphalt material for the Township consisted of stabilized base in the amount of $48 per ton, winter patch zero mix in the amount of $135 per ton, liquid asphalt tack coat, Grace AC 20 or equivalent in five gallon containers in the amount of $55 per gallon. Uh, I 6 skin patch in the amount of $72 per ton. I 5 fine in the amount of $55 per ton and quarter top mix in the amount of $72 per ton. And whereas the funds are available from account number 701 806 277, not to exceed $50,000, and have been certified by the Chief Financial Officer. Said certification be attached to this resolution now, therefore, be resolved. But if awarded commissioners, Township of Nulley County of Essex, State, New Jersey, that a contract be awarded to Newark Asphalt Corp for the bid in the amount not to exceed $50,000, $50, and that the mayor and township clerk are hereby authorized to enter into and sign said contract for Township of Nulley and move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. That concludes the business portion of our meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mayor. All persons addressing the Board of Commissions regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted by the Board, each person shall limit their address to five minutes. All remarks to the Board and its individual members must be addressed to the Mayor. The Mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the Board. Dialogue between citizens and others addressing the Board shall be allowed unless the Mayor or Presiding Officer or the majority of the membership of the Board shall determine that the interests of the quorum and or the expeditious conduct of Municipal business are being adversely affected by such dialogue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Ma Mayor. Be yes. Before you open it up to the public, I was just wondering if I could make a comment. Sure. Thank you so much. Last week there was an article about our budget in the Nutley Sun, and I, I've learned a lot about newspapers and how sometimes they don't get it all correct, but I just want to comment because a couple of residents and police and fire have stopped by the store to ask me some questions about this because, as I know, public safety is the big ex biggest expense on the municipal side of the budget, but I just felt that the need to just clarify a few things on this. <clears throat> the first thing um, I'd like to say is that in public safety, being the director of public safety, what we do there is we plan for the worst every year because we can't we're not, we can't predict how many storms there's going to be, how much crime there's going to be, and things like that. So we plan for the worst when we budget, and we hope for the best. This year, public safety gave back close to $700,000 to our municipal budget. Um, also, we did give the police officers a raise, which I will never hide behind. It was a 3% increase, but I think it's very, um, it has to be noted that by giving that increase, we also got back longevity. And when we studied that from our police officers, the 3% raise was actually less than um, giving the police officers longevity for all um, new hirees. Also, I went back a few years in my budget to see exactly um, what we were doing. Um, 2008, when I got elected and I inherited this budget, the budget went up 8%, um, from 2006 to 2007, it went up 8%. From 2007 to 2008, it went up 5%. Um, when I took over in 2008 on my first budget cycle, the budget actually went down 2.9%, and we realized the savings of 373000 approximately. In 2010, we went up 3.4% which was a 400, approximately $400,000 increase. In 2011, um, we went up 1.9%. In 2012, we went up approximately a quarter percent. Um, in 2013, we went up a little more than a half a percent. In 2014, we went up 2.8%. In 2015, we went up 2.1%. And in 2016, we went up one9 
And this year, we went up 3.3%. But with saying so, hopefully we have a good year and we are really mindful of the money that we spend through the whole town. And, and we're mindful of our fellow commissioners as well because we do all vote on this budget. Um, we've also increased our staff um, this past year from 2016 to 2017. Uh, we were able to um, hire nine new hires, hirees in the police department, which I stand behind and I think it's very important to keep our town safe and I hope that in the future we'll be responsible to the taxpayer, but we will also make sure we keep our um, residents safe and we did hire three um, fire um, personnel as well. With that being said, again, I just want people to realize out there the numbers are big in public safety, so when you have a 2% increase, it's all close to $300,000. But again, and um, Commissioner Evans, I, I know that some of this, um, these statements in here, you know, I don't know if I know Owen Proctor and I've dealt with the Nutley Sun a lot that, you know, what these statements are, but I always consider Tom Evans a friend and an ally on our, our board. There's not too many people that I could go to, and I go to him every single budget cycle to make sure that we're in line. And, you know, as Tom is a friend, I always say that it's a good resource to have someone that you can go to that's a partner at, or a retired partner at Price and um, Waterhouse. So I'm not looking to throw stones or point any fingers at anybody this evening, but I just wanted to set the record straight because I work very diligently in the public safety department, which is the biggest budget, again, on the municipal side, to control costs. But I will never, ever compromise safety doing so. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> Anybody like to address the uh, Board of Commissioners this evening? Joan Rubino, 48 North Road. Uh, I would first like to say that this body is very disrespectful to the citizens of this town we were waiting for an hour and a half before this meeting started. And I think that's a lot of nerve, especially since you had these kids from 715 who were told to be here at that time. Uh, there should be something done about that. Because if you are trying to discourage people from attending public meetings, you're being very successful. Uh, I really came to uh, question the money about the uh, school, the taxes for the school. Uh, the Mayor Scarpelli told the journal, this is, I have the paper here, that it's a sensitive issue to increase the tax burden. Uh, the commissioners have taken all steps to control the situation. My question is, what steps have you taken? Well, Mrs. Rubino, that quote was in response to a uh, specific question on the referendum and what we were doing as a body to control spending. And we've done a lot to control spending over the last eight years that I've been here. Uh, and, well, you know, this is the, my question is specific to the tax burden we, due to the school situation. I know that you've been working <clears throat> to that, control spending, but I want well, to know what you've done for the, the well, school Well, like, like I said, that question was a, to a specific question and did not pertain to what we're doing for school spending. It was in, in regard to what we're doing as a board of commissioners. And the way it was presented in the article may have come across a little different, just as Commissioner Petraco said. Sometimes what you say to the paper doesn't always get out exactly the way you said it. I agree with that, but uh, I, I still think that and, you're and fudging what, And what I, what I further said is that I think there's things that we can do working together, the board of commissioners, the board of education, to control costs that uh, going forward. So that, that was kind of not kind of lost in the article also. But I do want to apologize to everybody for our lateness. Un unfortunately, uh, one of our uh, professionals had a scheduling conflict that we needed to get done uh, while he was able to do that, and that was uh, unfortunate. I don't mean to contradict you, but I've been to other meetings in previous years, and the same thing has happened. It is nothing new. Well, it's, something it's, not, it's not to discourage public participation. I can assure well, you that. it sure as heck seems as it is. Um, there was another uh, 
comment made about the, um, from Mr. Genetempo in the paper, about the property values in this town uh, going up uh, because of the uh, schools being uh, improved, so to speak. Um, and he said that trailers are not the answer. And my question is, why not? If you lease a trailer, it's much less expensive. Uh, you don't have the cost of the building. Uh, the trailers are very, very nice from what I understand. They're like regular classrooms. You wouldn't even know that you were not in a school building. Uh, and f as far as property values, what good is it if your property value goes up, but you can't sell your house because your taxes are so high, like paying another mortgage? And I've said this at other meetings. When the board went around from school to school, uh, I've made that comment in the past. Um, and also, the gyms aren't educationally sound. What, what does that have to do with anything? What's wrong, uh, what's wrong with our gyms? A hundred years old? So they're just a, a, a big room with, with uh, hoops and whatnot? I don't get it. Um, also, uh, you talk about working with the Board of Education. We, and I'm quoting the uh, article again, um, Mayor Scarpelli. Uh, we know something needs to be done. And you have to put your heads together. Now, you've been, had this situation for how many years and your heads haven't been together on this? That comment, Mr. Rubino. Yeah, the, the comments is in the paper. It's incumbent on us to mitigate the situation in some way. We have to put our heads together. I mean, this has been going on for several years, and I would and think... I, and I, I think we have been putting our heads together. We've had multiple meetings with the Board of Education, and we will continue to have meetings with the Board of Education. Do you think that this is satisfactory, that we are going to be, bear the burden of this tremendous... If you say, oh, well, it's only $189 a year. I've heard that tune before. I've lived in this town for a long time, and that's what they always say. It's only X amount of money a year. And, oh, wow, that's not bad, but it's a lot more than X. Um, Five minutes, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Rubino. Anybody else like to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Neil Henning, 31 Terrace Avenue. Uh, on 722 of 2014, the Davis property received three pages of fire code violations that was supposed to be abated by 8-25-2014. Uh, did Mr. Davis abate those violations? No, he did not. Why not? I don't know. The fines for not abating the violations can be up to $5,000 a day, according to the fire department. Did the fire department find the owner? I don't know. What was the advice from our legal counsel regarding the town's potential liability for knowingly allowing renters to continue occupying a building for approximately two years without having the fire code violations abated? There's no, first of all, legal advice between myself and the commissioners is confidential. However, there has been no legal advice. This was, this was a problem going back a long time. There's a hardwired alarm system in the entire building that has existed for some time. Uh, there was an issue about how this was going to be installed. Uh, fortunately, it has now been installed, uh, but it didn't for a while. I don't know if they did go to court or not. I wasn't prosecuting at the time. I've been here since that time, so I, don't, I can't answer your question. Will that be something I can get an answer to? Uh, I mean, the commissioners can answer that. They were, they were here. Did you receive any advice from counsel at the time? Jenna Tempo is answering the questions for us. Thank you. Town purchased the property in June of 2016. Money was put aside at the closing to abate fire code violations. Whose responsibility is it to manage the property, and was that done? I believe the closing was in November, if I'm not mistaken. You are mistaken. Okay, thank you for correcting me. Um, but that, there was money withheld and it was corrected, it was done. 
So there was some issues getting it done and how it was going to be done, but we did get it done. When was it done? It was just completed, I think, within the in this in last month. Would you say it was completed like this past Monday? I, I, I'm not sure exactly when. I was told it was going to be completed. So Mr. DeMeo and I have been working to, to get that done. My understanding is when buildings change hands, the new owners required within 20 days prior to the transfer to file for a certificate of occupancy. Is that correct? That's a legal question, and I'm, I'm not here to answer your legal questions. But that's what the you know the code, Mr. Henning. Generally, with a residential real estate closing, there is a requirement. This was a different purchase. We have certifications from the state for multi-use buildings. Uh, the fire department was there; they did their inspections. So there were inspections done. I did provide to you the TCO this week. You asked for it. I got it from code enforcement. I submitted it to you. So you know that it exists. I appreciate that you handed me a, a TCO. Um, uh, uh, but the TCO was dated October 27th of 216. That's four months after the town purchased the building. I think you're wrong about the purchase date, Mr. Mr. Henning. You can, I'm not happy to go over. Be happy to go over with you tomorrow if you want to call me. I'll pull the file again. I know I produced the whole copy to you. I can look I, at the deed, not the contract. I believe the contract may be dated in June. I, I won't. I won't swear to it, but I'm pretty sure it was closed in November. Thank you. On the, on the uh, TCO, there's no uh, date for when this condition is supposed to be taken care of. Why is that? I don't know. I, I didn't even look at it. I just forwarded it to you because I know you were, wait, you were waiting to get it and I didn't want to make you wait any longer. I just forwarded it to you in an email. I, I appreciate you sending it to me, um, but I'm pretty sure when you get a temporary certificate of occupancy, there should be a date for when it's supposed to be abated. I would probably agree with you. Generally, that's probably correct. And so I would just request that perhaps we let code enforcement know and uh, we get that done then. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, oh, and one last thing. Uh, in, in early 2016, the town uh, closed on the property. Uh, town Commission environmental impact that re report and a finalized report was given to David Berry showing that the soil vapor analytic results indicated exceeding in uh, SV1, SV2, SV3, better known as benzene and chloroform. Based on these results, they recommended that the sub slab soil vapor sampling be done. Was this done? Which property are you referring to? That's still the same property. Uh, I believe that entire report talks about what needs to be done going forward. And they talk about, depending on what the future use of the property is going to be, that there should be some vapor studies, but not with regard to the transfer of the property. They so said that it was it said, occupied. I read the report, and it said, depending on what the future use may be, if they're going to be digging into the soil, there may need to be some additional soil testing. But from a phase one perspective, it was, it was fine. And that's, that's what the report said. Uh, I disagree with what that report You can what disagree. Your, I'm your, just telling you my interpretation I'm, of it. I'm, I'll, I'll disagree with your interpretation. I gave you the you, report, so I, I know I read the read report. So, I read the report, okay. and the report said that if, if it's V occupied, that further tests should be done. It okay, didn't I, say whether you're digging up the soil. It just said if, you, if, it's, if the building's to be occupied, it should be done. And so also it, said so that, nothing was done. that potential chemical might have come from a a laundromat uh, over more than a couple hundred feet away. I understand. And ultimately, that is not a significant environmental concern. And that's what the report says. Uh, so that's, I, I, your that's, interpretation may be different than mine, and that's fine. But I read the report. I know what it says. I also read the report. And, and it did say, if it's to be occupied, the building's to be occupied, they recommended. I'm not saying that it, it's not coming from 100 feet away. Even they said it may come from 100 feet away. They said if it's to be occupied, they would recommend that it would be done. I'm, I'm just asking if it was done. Obviously, it wasn't. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Henning. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Maria Baza, 209 Highfield Lane in Nutley. I'm here to talk about the school as well. Um, I think that if it is your intent to chase old-time uh, old people out of Nutley, you're doing a really good job because 
every street you go up and down, you'll see all these houses for sale. And I talk to a lot of people and they tell me that they're not staying in Nutley. They can't afford to. Why is it that we need new schools in this town? These schools have been perfectly fine for many years. There was a gentleman at a meeting we attended to, uh, in Spring Garden who had all kinds of st uh, statistics relative to uh, you know, growth in the future, family and, and things of that sort. They didn't want to hear that. What are you going to do in five years when we, we don't need the schools anymore and people aren't having children anymore? You know, these trailers you could get rid of, but you can't get rid of uh, school buildings. I mean, why, why do we, as uh, taxpayers, have to, you know, we don't have a say in anything that you people do. You just do it. Nobody cares what we think, what we say, what we could afford, or anything. I know you're you're just we, listening, and, we, and we that's appreciate we appreciate your yeah, comments. I think your I think your comments should be addressed to the board of education. But never, yeah, but you're you're the commissioners. I thought that you know I read the article as well in the paper, and and you're you know supposed to be the head of this town. I mean, we come to you for advice. We come to you to to try and help us. You you work for us, but I think it's the other way around. We seem to work for you people. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Michael O'Dreer, 133 High Street. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the, Ms. Rubino and her friend for speaking out. But I do want to say thank you to someone in this community, um, the former police chief, Robert Delita, who actually said and sent you letters saying, I see Nutley losing its historical character and forcing longtime residents out of Nutley because they can no longer pay these taxes. The final result, in my opinion, is the failure of the governing body to have empathy for the citizens who hope to spend the rest of their lives in a beautiful, wonderful town. It is true, I have gone to the Board of Ed and I have expressed my concerns, not just for myself, but my, for my neighbors. And just the other day, on driving on Prospect Avenue, going to work, thank God for my job, um, I saw three new houses go up for sale in one day. I, I found that very shocking. And another thing that was brought up during this meeting was your historical background and how you handled the budget, former Mayor Petraco? All I heard was your budget going up and up, except for one year that it went up one point something. And this is affecting our fellow homeowners. And yes, like the lady said before, we do look for forward to you for advice. But more important, we look forward to you guys for protection. Because many of us, and I don't mean the cop think protection, I mean protection in the sense of allowing us but to Michael, have the capacity to afford Michael, to stay in this let, town. Let me, let me just interrupt you for one second. I don't understand what you're trying to say to me because what I'm saying that it, this, it's a team effort through the township. We're, I'm the Department of Public Safety, DPW, Parks and Rec, so forth, and then we have our Board of Education. And we have tried to total line on these taxes. However, what I'm speaking of tonight is the public safety budget. Okay, now, do you want me to start sending cops home? Or maybe we should just, should we eliminate the fire department? Because this is the, these are the answers, these are sometimes the questions that I get. Because you know what, it seems like to me that nobody wants to pay for a cop or a fireman until they need them. Then when their house is on fire and they're rescuing your children or yourself, then all of a sudden they're the best people in the world. Or when you have a call to your house, the police can't get there quick enough. But you know what? There's an expense to doing that. And when I, I didn't say that my budget's been flat every year, but I am very proud of the increments that it has gone up. And it hasn't been easy. There's a lot of things that are outside our control. The health benefits, the pension contributions, all that stuff. So for you to come up there and just continually to say to us that we're not doing our jobs, it's, it's really... Well, actually, Robert Delita is saying that, the former police chief of Nutley. Well, let me, let, you know, I, I, I'm, I was really trying to bite my tongue on that, but I guess I'm going to have to comment being you're calling me no. out on it. You know what? Yeah, please do. Listen, Bob Delita is a personal friend of mine, and he's chief of police, but I want to ask you a question. Bob Delita is also collecting the chief's pension and benefits. And, and I know we're paying for okay. it. Okay, and we're the ones paying for it. 90% so of it. Uh, if you're going to interrupt me, I'm myself, sorry. Okay. okay. So... You know, when we have people and sometimes employees or past employees write letters or come to the mic, I want to ask a question like, we can't have it every which way here. You got people don't want apartments in town. 
okay, well, if we only have a, a pot of what we have as far as rateables right now, and we don't incre increase the rateables, what are we supposed to do up here? Because everything goes up, just and like I it goes up in my the question. Okay. I have the answer. All right, look, I have nothing against cops and firemen or these guys over here making money. I have nothing against that. But when I find and I look at the, the, the paperwork and the, the salaries, they're making three times as much as I am. I remember there was a time, eight years ago, maybe seven years. Michael, our salaries, salaries I, were, I'll speak for myself, Michael, as far as the public we're more safety. We're as, with far the people, as the homeowners. As far as the public safety salaries, I will put them up against anywhere in the county because if you go across the Passaic River, you have cops, cop, cops. There was a patrolman from Wayne today in my store. He's making over a hundred thousand. No, he's a patrolman. Okay. He's making over a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. There's a captain. There, I'm sorry, a, a sergeant in Wayne making over a hundred and fifty thousand. The police chief is making two hundred thousand. Yeah, well, I, but, I know, but, but let me finish, Michael, please. That's not happening here, but we have to be competitive somewhat to attract good people and also to keep police officers in our town. Because what do you think police want to do? They want to, just like all of us, they want to make the most money they can. So they can transfer to Bergen County where they're making a lot more than here. So we have to be competitive. Just like when you go to work, Michael, for whatever your job function is, I do, I want a fair salary for the work that I'm doing. But again, for you to come up to the mic and say, but there's like, a difference. we're not doing our job. Last year, I handed back $700,000 to the municipality. I didn't go spend the money foolishly. We're very conscious of, of the money that's spent in public safety. And I'll say this to my fellow commissioners. I realize that I have the largest budget here. But to point the finger, you can't have it both ways. And if the community wants to come out and come to the mic and we start getting people here and they say, Commissioner Petraca or Commissioner, uh, Mayor Scarpelli, listen, we want a reduction in staff. You know what? Instead of having 70 cops that I think we should have 100 because of what our borders are starting to look like and the calls, you should stop by the courtroom tomorrow morning and see what's walking in and out of there and all the activity that's there. So for you, to, again, my, you know, we, if the public outcry is make, instead of 70 cops, let's bring it down to 40, I could do that. I could do that because I've done it in the past. I've laid off police and firemen in the past. I've had 350 people crammed into this room because, I've been I'm, try, because I'm trying to do the right thing with these taxes but I just because, let you know. because okay. we pay the taxes also and, I, and to the senior citizens that are here. I have my parents that are living here and that are stressed out with these taxes and that stuff too. So we're not, not sympathetic to what we're doing. Well, here. I just but, want to say- But there's gotta be a balance, Michael, that you strike that you could still get the job done. We could still respond to the calls and we could still take care of our community. All I'm saying is this, your competitiveness that you talk about is forcing a lot of people- Wrap it up, this Michael. Town. That's what it, and honestly, if I was a public employee of this town, if I was making sixty, seventy thousand dollars, I would be, be satisfied. It's easy to I'm be. I'm just being. It's easy. You it's, guys, you, ladies like that coming out now. Now they're starting to. It's come, easy. Come to the mic. It's easy to be a critic from that side of the mic. It's easy to be a critic from a safe distance. I'm just being you honest about it. Run next time. Run for the board of commissioners. Oh, trust we'll me, I've been asked to. And we'll see what kind of job you could do. I'm oh, definitely not commissioner. I would want that job, mayor. Well, well it's kind right. of the same job. I had both of them. Thank you, Michael. Anybody else like to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Seeing none. Move to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Tucci? Aye. Commissioner Aye. Evans? Aye. Commissioner Petraco? Aye. Mayor Scarpelli? Aye. Good night, everybody. And the time is 9.31.